Hello Year 4, I'm here with your English lesson for Monday the 25th of January. Um, first thing I'd like you to do please is write the date and what. The date is Monday the 25th of January 2021 and we are learning to use a range of rich vocabulary including expanded noun phrases to write our innovated story. Once you have written that and underlined it, I'd like you to just go back to your planning sheets, look at your story mountain and read through your vocabulary planning table so that you are ready for today's lesson. So pause the video and do those things, please. OK, last lesson, um, your lesson with Mrs. Plews, you wrote a beautiful paragraph, uh, which was the second section of your story. You had some really nice tension and drama in that work. I would like you to read back through that paragraph, please. And have a think, how are you going to begin your writing today? Hopefully you're really pleased with what you've done so far and you've got some really nice ideas about how you're going to keep writing today. Just a reminder for you, our target for this unit is to use expanded noun phrases and we are all getting very good at that now. So let's have a little um, practice to warm up. I've got a picture here of a girl in a car with her teddy bear in the back and I have identified some nouns in the picture. The girl, the teddy and the car. The girl, teddy and car are three nouns. I would like to expand those and turn them into expanded noun phrases. So I wonder if you could pause the video, please, and come up with three different expanded noun phrases so you can describe the girl, the teddy and the car. Come back to me when you are done, please. Right, I am going to have a go now. I'm going to start with the teddy. That's a that's a white teddy. So the, the cute white teddy. How about that? The cute white teddy. That's better than just teddy, isn't it? That adds a lot more information for the reader. What about the car? The red fast car. The red fast car. I could probably do better than red. Let's say the tomato red, the tomato red fast car. It's even nicer. Now I know what shade of red it is. And the small happy girl. Or the small happy birthday girl. Small happy birthday girl. Um, I know it's her birthday because you might have realised, looking at the picture, that that's actually me. That's me on my second birthday with my new car and I put my little teddy bear in the back to go for a ride around the living room. I thought you might enjoy that. OK, well done if you managed to expand those noun phrases. We're going to move on with our stories today. And today we are going to focus on writing the problem part of your story. Now, I wonder what happens in this paragraph. Let's remind ourselves. Pause the video, have a look back at your two plans. Make sure you know what you have got planned to write in this paragraph. In our um, main text, in our original Escape from Pompeii, this is the paragraph in which the children heard dogs barking and people screaming. They heard Mount Vesuvius roar. Its top exploded. A cloud of ash rose to the heavens. Tranio and Livia held each other and lava covered Pompeii. What I'd like you to do before we go any further is once you have read your description for that paragraph, your plan, I would like you to say what you are going to write out loud. If you say what you're going to write out loud, you are more likely to write really nice work. You're more likely to use adventurous vocabulary and different sentence structures just by practicing what you are going to write out loud first. So pause our video, please. Say what you are going to write. OK, I hope you chose some really nice words and you used your fronted adverbials and your expanded noun phrases. 
what we're going to do now is we are going to watch the section of the Mount Vesuvius video that corresponds with this point in the story. If you would like to write down some notes while you are watching this section to help you when you come to write this paragraph today, then please do. Please write down your ideas and the things you would like to include. Okay, so really, really dramatic scenes. Here is what a good one might look like. Um, this, what, this one also describes them getting into the boat. So, bang, crash. When they finally reached the harbour, Tranio and Livia could barely breathe. The tremors and explosions from the mountain beyond the city walls were becoming more violent. It was now hard to see through the choking clouds of ash. Everything was grey. Most boats had left the dock and were laden with people escaping across the sea. Only a few remained. Help me, cried a young boy desperately. I can't find my grandfather. Come with us, replied Tranio, coughing into the damp cloth he was using to protect his nose and mouth. Livia pointed to the only wooden fishing boat left in the dock. Fighting for breath, an elderly fisherman began untying the boat and unnoticed the three children clambered quietly in. Clambered quietly in. They hid under some thick sails which protected them from the thick black ash falling from the sky. I'm Titus, whispered the young boy. Where are we going? They did not know or care anywhere but here. Okay. So I'm not actually going to write the bit where they go onto the boat today. Um, I'm just going to focus on this section here in my writing. So let's see, what do we like? We've got bang, we've got crash, so we've got onomatopoeia again, just like in the section you read with Mrs. Plews last week. Um, when they finally reach the harbour, that's a nice fronted adverbial. We've got the comma there at the end as well. Look, when they finally reach the harbour, comma, Tranio and Livia could barely breathe. The tremors and explosions. They didn't just say the noises from the mountain, they said the tremors and explosions from the mountain beyond the city walls were becoming more violent. It was hard to see through the choking clouds of ash. Choking clouds of ash. That's lovely. Everything was grey. I don't know whether you spotted, they have long sentences and then they put short sentences in the middle and that kind of creates a bit more drama. Those short sentences are quite punchy and they really make you listen. Most boats had left the dock and were laden with people. I like that word, laden. Only a few people remained. Help me, cried, cried the lovely speech verb, cried a young boy. And then they put an adverb in, D, 
desperately, he cried desperately. Once again, like the extract you read with Mrs. Kluge, it's got some really nice effective dialogue. It's building that tension, showing how scared people are. Come with us, replied Tranio, coughing into the damp cloth he was using to protect his nose and mouth. That's a nice detail. Livia pointed to the only wooden fishing boat. They didn't just say fishing boat, they said wooden fishing boat left in the dock. Fighting for breath. We've got another fronted adverbial there. An elderly fishing man. So we've got an expanded noun phrase. They didn't just say fishing man, they said elderly fishing man. Began untying the boat and unnoticed the three children clambered. That's a lovely word. Not climbed, but clambered. And then we've got another adverb, quietly in. They clambered quietly. They hid under some thick sails. Got another adjective there to describe our noun, which protected them from the thick black ash. Thick black ash, expanded noun phrase. More dialogue, I'm Titus, whispered the young boy. Lovely. I like the way they ended on a short sentence just to get put that punchy drama in right at the end. Um, pause the video at this point and I'd like you to magpie any vocabulary that you would like to use in your paragraph today. So just write down anything that you think, actually, I really like that. I'm going to try that out in my work. Once you've, once you've done that, then start the video playing again, please. Okay, the next thing you need to do, um, you actually don't need to write the short date in the margin, do you? You've got the long date and the waltz already, so don't worry about the short date in the margin. How can we start today's paragraph, I wonder? How are we going to start today's paragraph? Hmm. Well, before we come on to that, let's look at our steps to success, because that's going to help us. It's important when we think about what to write, uh, that we also think about what are we trying to achieve. So, a clear plot. If you are following your plan carefully, then you will, you will automatically have your clear plot in place. Powerful verbs. Now, we've just seen some lovely powerful verbs in that extract we read. We've got cried, we've got clambered, we've got whispered. So it's just thinking about using the most interesting verbs you can rather than the first thing that comes into your head. If you're at school, you might like to use a, a thesaurus to look for some more interesting words. If you're at home, there are thesauruses on the internet, or you might actually be lucky enough to have one. Uh, use some adjectives to describe your work today. Make sure you write in paragraphs, okay, and, and between each paragraph, leave a line. Use some conjunctions, please. Um, and you are going to use these to join together your sentences um, and join your clauses. And I'd like to see you using fronted adverbials, which you've got really good at now. Lots of you are doing that almost by habit. Just don't forget to put the comma after your fronted adverbial. Right, I'm gonna have a go now. Um, I had to think about how to start my work and I started um, with heart racing. So Mrs. Cleese finished hers with to the harbour. So I picked up with heart racing, comma, Augustus heard people's muffled screams and the loud crying from desperate, confused animals. Like a beast, he heard Mount Vesuvius roar. I hope you like that start. I thought it was quite clever to start with a, a nice fronted adverbial showing how he's feeling, his heart is racing. And I also like the fact that I did like a beast. So I've got a simile at the beginning, which is acting as a fronted adverbial. It's describing how the volcano is roaring. It's roaring like a beast. Hmm. What am I gonna write next? I'm gonna have a look at my notes because I've written down some notes as I was watching that video. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more to begin with about how it's roaring. So like a beast, you heard Mount Vesuvius roar. Uh, I'm going to keep going with that simile of beast. Um, with the might of a lion and the speed of a cheetah. Is a cheetah the best? The speed of... What's a really fast animal? 
might go with a gazelle. With the might of the lion and the speed of a gazelle, lava flew out of the... There's something volcano. In fact, let's put an expanded noun phrase here. Lava threw out of the mighty, mighty, comma, trembling volcano and sped towards the town. With the might of a lion and the speed of a gazelle, lava flew out of the mighty trembling volcano and sped towards the town. Or let's say molten lava to show how hot it is. It's just so hot. Um, right, I wrote down my notes that I wrote when we were watching that clip. I put ash like rain, rumbling, roaring, cloud monster. It's like the end of the world. It's ominous, fierce and flames, loud cracks, buildings caving in and lightning. So I'd like to use some of that now. Um, I'm going to say something ash. Dirty ash. Fell from the sky in huge clumps like heavy rain. Soaking everything in sight. That soaking is probably not the right word. Caking everything in sight with its with its uh, fearful cover. Rumbling, rumbling and roaring, rumbling and roaring, let me move myself out of the way, was incessant. That means it, it never stopped. The rumbling and roaring was incessant. Um, let's think about how my character is feeling. Augustus, Augustus's mouth dropped open wide. I like the idea of the ash being like a cloud monster as he stared, stared instead of look, we've got a nice powerful verb, as he stared in horror at the, the black cloud monster. Um, kind of like grows doesn't it it starts small and it's growing across the sky as a black cloud monster which was speedily enveloping the sky oh i like my word ominous as well at the ominous black cloud monster which was speedily enveloping the sky I think I feel like it's time to have him say something. Barely able to speak. Barely able to speak. He. What's the right verb for his speech? Whispered feels too easy. It needs to be. It needs to show how hard he's finding it to actually get his words out. Um, he's stuttered. What? What? Help me. Barely able to speak, he stuttered. What, what helped me? Um, before anyone could answer, comma, that's a lovely fronted adverbial again. Before anyone could answer, loud cracks could be heard as buildings caved in all around him. Augustus froze. That's a nice short sentence for, for drama. Augustus froze, trembling uncontrollably. Pointed out verbial again. I'm showing how he feels. Uh, trembling uncontrollably, he clung to his friend. Um, I'm 
unable to think clearly. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Let me have a look. I hope that I have covered all my different senses. So I thought about what I can hear, what I can see, what I can smell, what I can touch. I don't think taste is very appropriate. I don't think I actually have covered smell and touch. So I'm going to read through my work, check it carefully and see if I can add in anything about smells and textures. The heart racing, Augustus heard people's muffled screams and the loud crying from desperate, confused animals. Like a beast, he heard Mount Vesuvius roar. With the might of a lion and the speed of a gazelle, molten lava flew out of the mighty trembling volcano and sped across the town. Dirty ash fell from the sky in huge clumps like heavy rain, caking everything in sight with its... Um, with its fearful cover and burning his nostrils as he breathed. Yeah, we've got a bit of got a bit of smell in there now. Uh, the rumbling and roaring was incessant. Augustus's mouth dropped open wide as he stared in horror at the ominous black cloud monster, which was speedily enveloping the sky. Barely able to speak, he stuttered, "What? What? Help me!" Before anyone could answer, loud cracks could be heard as buildings caved in all around him. Augustus froze. Trembling uncontrollably, he clung to his friend's um, clammy arm. Oh, there we are, we've got some touch in there as well. We've got some texture. I can really start to feel what the person might be seeing, hearing, smelling and touching. I feel like I'm in their shoes. He clung to his friend's clammy arm, unable to think clearly. And that's probably what, how I would write my paragraph. Um, I'm sure you've probably got better ideas than me. What I'm going to ask you to do is just pause your video on my paragraph. So if you're in class with Mrs Chamberlain, then pause the video right now. And if you're at home, do exactly the same. I would like you to write your paragraph. Um, you might actually use two paragraphs. If you do, then you need to leave a line in between them. When you have finished writing your paragraph, you are going to move the video on so that you can check your work. But pause it here for now, please, while you write. Okay, well done on your writing today. Um, you now need to check your step to success, please. Make sure that you have got a clear plot still. You've used powerful verbs. If you haven't, go back and add them in. Make sure you've used some adjectives to describe, maybe some expanded noun phrases. Make sure you have written in paragraphs. You have got some conjunctions to join your clauses and you have used fronted adverbials. Well done on your work today, Year 4. I hope you're feeling really proud. If you have got someone that you are able to share your writing with, then please do share it so other people can enjoy your beautiful work. I can't wait to see it. Take care.